Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Dr. Romina, and uh, I'm a chiropractor. I've been in practice since 1995, and every Wednesday, I meet with you wherever you are to talk about health, wellness, and alternatives, and things that I actually discuss with my patients in the clinic. Hopefully, these Wellness Wednesdays are going to be effective and beneficial for you, and uh, please don't hesitate to contact us on our Facebook page, on our, through email, our website, just so we can be here to help you and or guide you to the right direction. So let's talk about knee pain. Okay. Knee pain is the largest joint of the human body. Did you know that it's responsible for supporting your entire body weight? So it allows us to walk, to run, to dance, to kneel, and this joint, when damaged, it could affect the whole entire balance of the body. Because it's centrally located, any problems in the knee can actually affect your hips, your ankles, and your arches, as well as your lower back. So a lot of times, most people think, because of my back pain, I have knee problem. You could have wrecked knee problem just by certain injuries such as like ligamentous tear. If you've been in a car accident or acute trauma, it's very common to have these soft tissue injuries. Or let's say if you have repetitive injury, you're a runner or you are typically kneeling in your type of profession. Let's say you put tiles on the floor. Those repetitive motions or continuous aggravation of the problem would cause wear and tear in the joints and make the surrounding soft tissues weaker. The problem is uh, this could lead into other symptoms of knee problems, such as osteoarthritis. We also call it degenerative joint disease, which is basically a degeneration of the joint, and it becomes a disease because it's an uncomfortable array of symptoms that it follows through. There could be an RA, which is rheumatoid arthritis. That is really an autoimmune disease. Typically, most of the arthritis, the rheumatoid arthritis are somewhere between 9 to 7% of the total arthritis, whereas the predominant damaging arthritis are actually osteoarthritis, also known as wear and tear arthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease. Another factor could be a metabolic problem, which is gout. So gout is swelling, inflammation, severe pain. It's even it's even painful to put a sheet on top of your knee. That means that you really have gout and that's a metabolic problem. It's easily preventable and controlled by your diet and of course medication helps. I want to stay on this page for a little bit longer and that is because let's talk about traumatic injuries to the knee. You, the knee structure is supported by three joints, which we're going to go into the next page, okay? So you have here your thigh bone, which is called the femur. You have here your leg bone, which is also known as tibia, and supported below the knee joint by another bone called fibula. Between these two joints, these two joints is a little structure that's round, and it's called the patella or the kneecap. This is the only part in the body that you have three bones coming together and creating a joint, which allows you to flex, extend, be able to run, play tennis, or walk, go up and down the stairs, or even perform simply driving without pain. So depending on the location of your pain, it would indicate how these structures are affected. The ligaments play a crucial part of maintaining the integrity of this joint, which ultimately translates into maintaining your ability to move and bend without pain or discomfort. So if you're experiencing, so in this picture, the location of your pain will tell us the swelling where it could be the soft tissue problem, right? So if you're feeling a pain above your kneecap, it could very well be an overloading of the quadricep tendons. So we're looking at actually swelling and inflammation in tendon. Typical diagnosis of that would be either a bursitis or tendonitis. Now, if you're experiencing knee pain below your kneecap, right above your shin, shin area, 
but below the kneecap, we're looking at either Oshkut slaughter. This is typical, very common in runners, and it actually extends down to the tibia area. Again, it's pulling of the tendon below here, and that would be causing a little bit of traumatic or pulling or Ill inflammation in the lower part of the, the ligaments. If it happens in the younger adults that you have at home, 10 to 16 year olds, your adolescent, this is also called Oshkut Slaughter's disease. Typically is a wear and tear in the joint and it can cause deformities in the later ages because of the pulling of the <clears throat> tendon on the bones. And that's really the fascia area. Stretching would help immensely, warming up before a run and stretching after running or any kind of sports activities can actually help reduce this problem, followed by ice. Now, if you feel pain on top of the actual kneecap itself, you're thinking about chondromalacia patella, which is changing of the bone structure that is causing wear and tear. It could be patella tracking. So I'm gonna give you a little tip. If you're sitting, go ahead and grab your kneecap with, uh, your two, with your index finger on the outer side and your thumb on the inner side. So you just hold on to your outside of your knee, your patella, or just put your hand on top of your patella or on top of your kneecap. Now go ahead and extend and flex your leg. So bring it all the way up, extend your knee, and then bring it back down. If you notice a sudden twitch or a shift of the patella, that could be a patella tracking problem. It can cause into arthritis, bursitis, and it can even cause a little bit of Baker's cyst, like you get a swelling and inflammation. That could be, could be addressed with the biomechanics of your body. So I'm gonna go into detail later, okay? But another area is the two sides of your kneecap. The two sides of your kneecap are typically a meniscal injury or what we call collateral ligamentous tear or arthritis. So let's see where these guys are. If you look at the side, you have the medial collateral, and that's like where you're, the inside of your knee. And mirror image of that is on the other side called the lateral collateral ligament. The two areas that you most commonly hear in athletes hurting are these two, which is a crisscross section. They're called anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. Those are responsible for the twisting movements of your knee. Specifically in sports, I want you to visualize a person running or playing tennis or football or running, but mainly like tennis and football are very typical and basketball as well, because you're running, you're twisting, you're running, you run, stop, twist, run, stop, twist, or you're running and you twist in the air. So these are the two crucial ligaments that are responsible for that slight rotation of your foot and how you experience that put your hands on your patella, on your knee joint, and move your ankles to inside and move your, your toe inside and outside. You notice that little slight, about five to 10 degrees of twisting. Those are your ACL and PCL in action. So moving on, it's very important that you realize that your knee joint is the source of stability in your body. Any changes in your knee joint can affect the segments above and below. So if you're noticing pain in your knee, let me ask you, are you experiencing pain in your lower back, arches of your feet, uh, shoulders, middle of your back? Are you experiencing any pain, getting headaches as well as knee pains? You do have to consider the fact that if you have isolated knee problem, then we can focus on the knee. But if you have knee problem combined with other problems, other symptoms, then you really want to look at yourself as more of a full kinematic chain, not just your knee. Even though your body is pointing your attention to that area, it may be a reflection of an underlying problem somewhere else. So during your course of treatment, it's very important that you don't focus on your knee, but also focus on your body as a whole rather than just one area. So a couple of symptoms that are very typical, swelling, stiffness, redness, warm to touch, if you feel weak or instability, popping or crunching noises, 
Crunching noses is usually what we call crepitus. Crepitus is basically a significance of wear and tear or degenerative arthritis. Popping and clicking are an indication of instability of the biomechanics of the body. So you definitely do want to look at to see what about your hips? What about your arches of your feet? So those are immediate areas you want to look at. If you are not able to fully extend your knee and straighten it, it could really be a reason of either a soft tissue problem or a skeletal or bone structure problem, right? Uh, if you all of a sudden have a non, you cannot bear the weight, you cannot stand on your knee, you're swelling, you're hopping, all of a sudden you certainly want to contact your physician at that time immediately. If you're noticing visible deformity, you are already at a later stage or mid stage of degenerative arthritis. Sometimes elevated body temperatures are indication of inflammation or which is an infection. So we need to find out where that's coming from. If you are experiencing pain with exercise, identify if the pain comes before the exercise, during the exercise or after. These three factors are extremely important for you and for your physician to identify where the problem can be. It's almost like, um, it's almost like play, playing detective with your, with your symptoms. All these clues are indication to find out for us where is the underlying cause. So let's talk about osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is more of a, a systemic problem. It's identified with a blood test when you have the RA factors. Whereas osteoarthritis, you have a negative blood test, but you have a lot of deep pain, deformity of the surrounding joints. The, the joint space reduces, as you can see, this is a normal joint space, where the synovial fluid just flows beautifully and it secures your body to be able to bend and twist and turn and squat and run and go up and down the stairs and walk uphill and walk downhill without a problem. Whereas osteoarthritis, you have problems with certain movements such as going downhill or walking down the stairs or sitting for too long. So well, how do we diagnose this? After doing an examination where we identify, okay, what could be the problem? As we go through our process of elimination of the problem, the best identifier, if it's a skeletal problem, if we think it's an osteoarthritis problem or a biomechanical issue, is to take an x-ray. X-rays are extremely effective to identify if it's a bone, issue, bone problem. Sometimes on an x-ray, you see these uh, dark, dark areas and different shades of gray. Bone is always whiter on an x-ray, where a soft tissue, air is black, and then muscles are different shades of gray. The more dense the muscle is, the whiter it, no, it shows, right? It's about the density of what uh, the x-ray rates pick up. This is the patella, as we were talking about. This is the side view. This is your femur. This is your shin and your tibia and fibula. And this is your patella. So what we look for is we look for the... We look, to, we look to see, okay, has there been any changes up here? Did we have any swelling? Does the dark space get dark, bigger? Is the patella higher or lower? That would indicate of instability between the, your ligament, your quadricep muscle versus your anterior tibialis muscles. We also look for alignment. We look for bone structure, what's the integrity of the bone. We look for uh, cartilage. What's the integrity of this joint? Is it even or uneven? And we also look at the soft tissue. So the ABCs of the x-ray analysis is of such. But if you have, if your x-rays are normal and you still have pain, typically seen in a car accident cases or traumatic injuries, we always follow it up with an MRI. Sometimes you could also do CT scan, arthroscopic, examinations. These are all diagnostic tools that will tell us where the problem is. But the protocol states that first we take an x-ray from the patient to make sure there's not any bony abnormality. Then we actually follow it up by MRI or other soft tissue diagnosers. So 
what are your treatments? Okay, your treatment options are very uh, conservative. You can go from conservative to full-blown aggressive. Conservative methods, of course, is physical therapy, chiropractic visits, personal trainers can also, who are trained in the biomechanics of the body, can actually help you as well. Or you could do some stretches at home. If you feel better with stretches, you definitely know that you have more of a musculoskeletal biomechanical issues. If your stretches do not help you, you certainly want to follow up with your physician, either your primary care physician, your orthopedic doctor, or even your chiropractor. So your options are knee replacement surgeries, which is usually in the cases of degenerative joint disease and arthritis. If you have rheumatoid arthritis, there's a restorative of function can be achieved with knee replacement, but uh, usually diet, mild stretches, swimming in the pool and exercises in the pool are going to be very effective because we take away the weight bearing factor and allow the joint to move without the forces of gravity. Then you fractures, which are easily identified on an x-ray. Again, we said x-rays are all about bones. So fractures or ligament injuries can easily be repaired by partial or total knee replacement, depending on the type of injury that we're looking at. So one of the factors that is very effective for you is health and weight maintenance. Did you know that for every one kilogram or 2.25 pounds of weight increase, you actually overload your joints that's already compromised. So I'm not talking about your overall joints, I'm talking about the joints that are compromised. So we're looking at lower back, hips, knees, ankles. If you already have an issue in those areas, let me tell you, weight gain is going to that much, three to four times more aggravate the problem. And on the same token, by losing weight, you actually help reduce the, the pressure on the joint area as you're going through the rehabilitation process. Different types of injuries, different kind of anatomy of injuries are ACL here. This is the iliotibial bands, iliotibial syndrome, that you get like this little cuff looking on top of your patella. Right inside your knee joint, we talked about meniscal injury on top of it, it's typically called the runner's knee, which is a quadricep problem. If you're a runner and you're listening to this PowerPoint presentation, please note your hip position is extremely effective in how your knee functions. And if you're feeling you're getting a lot of iliotibial band or IT band trigger points, you have to address the position of your pelvis to your knee, to your ankle. If it's not taken care of, you will have problems in segments above or joints above and joints below. Now, another factor that's really important is uh, what type of braces do you get? Like, how do you treat this? How do you take care of yourself? Our first inclination is, okay, let's ice the area. If it's acute injury, you ice it for 15 minutes to 20. And the reason is being is, if you are swelling and inflammation, ice creates vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction reduces the blood flow. It allows the body to reduce the swelling, which um, ultimately reduce pain. If you have a chronic problem, not an acute condition, heat is going to give you a better option. So you ice for acute condition, acute swelling, and uh, for sudden injury or an automatic or a trauma, let's say a car accident, a fall, or if you've been suffering from knee problem, heat is your best friend, but heat can only be very effective for you and is worth your while if you follow it with stretch, not strengthening, stretch exercises. And that could be as mild as a child's pose or a camel pose in yoga, or just bringing your knee to your chest on your terms and on your comfort zone. There are different types of braces out there. So which one do you choose? Typically, we always start with a soft brace. The ones that you see up on here that are more complicated, those are typically called recommended by your orthopedic doctor, depending if it's a meniscal problem, an ACL problem, or more of a joint reconstructive and repair. But the soft braces are more for your degenerative arthritis and uh, just more of a palliative care or home care. Going back to your knee 
Posture is a very important topic for me because I believe the entire musculoskeletal system, your whole body, how it moves, is based on your posture. And unfortunately, with everything going on in our lives, not just the fact that we have had to change our uh, lifestyle behaviors recently with all the recent activities going on, but also we have different personalities, we have different lifestyles, we have different work habits. We've had different childhood history, where we were, whether you were, just kind of stuttered over there, whether you were very active as a child or whether you were not active as a child, whether you have scoliosis, you don't have scoliosis. So if you're watching this for the first time and you just want to know what's, what can I do, first place to look for is your posture. If your posture is improved, your overall musculoskeletal conditions are improved and they will be helped immensely. If you have a poor posture and you know you have forward head carriage, round the shoulders, you know, hyperkyphosis or slouching, then the other areas of your body will be aggravated and will become worse. So simple as that. So what kind of exercises should you do if you have poor posture or if you do have problems with your knee problem or ankle or hip? but knee is the problem. There's two types of exercises. We call them upper cross and lower cross syndrome. And basically your body compensates as the pelvis goes backwards, your you know, the abdominal is forwarded, the, back go, the upper back goes posterior, your head goes forward. So if you notice, there's always a zigzag motion of the body. And that is how the body compensates. If your whole body is tilted forward, your back goes back, backward. Constant compensation is always in a backward, forward, backward, forward position from the side. Same thing with your spine from, uh, from the back. You know, if we do a lateral view or a side view evaluation versus a frontal view or a, or a back view evaluation, if your shoulder is if your left shoulder is higher and your body is moving to the to raising on the left side, your pelvis is going to go up on your right side. So the right side controls the left, the front controls the back. Therefore, your exercises have to be balanced based off of that. And this is based on the biomechanics of the body. The foundation goes back to the, the three planes of movement in the three-dimensional body position. So let me bring it back and simplify it is you want to make sure that your exercises are balanced. So if you're working out your frontal body, your upper back, your extensor muscles, make sure you balance it off with your abdominal and your core. If you, have pro if you sit for a prolonged period of time, you shut off your gluteus, your performers, your hamstrings. Okay, so if you're sitting for a prolonged period of time, hamstring, glutes, uh, performers tend to shut down. You definitely want to make sure that you strengthen those muscles first before you start running or stretch your quadriceps, right? So remember one rule, front balances the back, right balances the front, right balances left. So make sure that you exercise in a proportional manner. So what kind of exercises are great, are good for your knee? One, is partial squat is going to be very effective for quadricep muscles and also your glutes and your hamstrings, as well as your, your gastrocnemius muscle, which is your calf muscle, right? Your hamstring stretches are going to be very effective. And if you're having any hamstring, it's always, always, always very effective to stretch them, especially before you run or if you've been sitting for too long. Please, please note. Calf stretches, sideline stretches, glutes, bridges, wall squats are going to be very effective and wall squats are amazing if you want to improve your forward head carriage as well, just so you know. And if you are suffering from forward head carriage, your pelvis is already compensating. So if your head is forward, let me assure you that your pelvis is already shifted. So balance the two by wall squats and you can do that anywhere and making sure that the back of your head is touching the wall. Other exercises would be going to choose taking the stairs instead of an elevator if you can, if there's a short distance. 
choose to park a little bit farther before you go to grocery store so you can actually walk as you've been driving and sitting for driving and driving. If you are a walker, it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to do a couple of lunges as you're walking or stretch your body. If you have a gym ball at home, it's a great investment. Some, it's somewhere between 10 to $20. You can buy that anywhere and uh, have any gas station to inflate it for you. But gym balls are extremely effective in any type of exercises for any part of your body. And uh, flexing and extending your toes while you're doing single leg bridges are effective. And if you're into yoga, it's the best exercise you could do and I highly recommend it. And if you have access to a pool, walking inside the water or marching in the water on a shallow area is going to be very effective and a treatment for your knee problem. So practice regular exercises, con concentrate on strengthening and flexibility and strengthening and stretching should always be balanced together. They go hand in hand. In hand. So pretend that stretching and strengthening is almost like salt and pepper. They have to go together. And listen to your body. If you feel any signs uh, that we discussed, that we talked about, please don't hesitate to contact your doctor and uh, or contact your personal trainer, physical therapist. Go online and look at some YouTube stretches and uh, see what can be done. Or reach out to us. We're here for you. It's very easy to send you back an email or guide you to the right direction or offer you a link that you can look into. Working from home, and since most of us spend quite a few number of hours of our day at work, it's very important that you maintain proper posture while you're at work. So whether you're sitting or you're standing or you're squatting at work, rule of thumb, ladies and gentlemen that are listening to this PowerPoint, please, Stand during the day and sit in the afternoon. Prolonged standing with stand desks have caused varicose veins, restless leg syndrome, pelvis abnormality, ankle problems, foot problems, because it's weight bearing over a long period of time against gravity. So if you alternate between sitting and standing, you actually increase the longevity of your body without even trying to do anything other than that. Just be smart about it. When you're standing, again, these green points are specifically your earlobe, your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and your ankles should all be in a straight line. Don't look down trying to accommodate to your monitor, but in fact, lift them on your monitor so your head is in a more of an upright position. How do you know how, you, how high your monitor should be? Make sure your chin is parallel to the ground. That's where the center of your monitor should be. And once your chin is parallel to the ground and the monitor is in front of you comfortably, that's where it's supposed to be. So if you're adjusting your desk, your workstation, or if you're deciding whether you should be, if you're working from home, whether you should be on the kitchen counter or a dining ch ch table or the sofa, your screen has to be in front of your face and your chin has to be parallel with the ground. Simple rule. Again, posture, I can't, I can't emphasize the importance of posture in your overall, any joint in your body. There are posture products that you can purchase. There is um, all these beautiful item pictures on Amazon that you can buy a lot of China cheap product. The problem with the common denominator between all those posture devices is the fact they compress your armpits and it actually forces your head to go more forward which alters the body has to balance that with shifting your pelvis. So if you're purchasing a posture support, make sure it's the type that does not compress your armpit. I recommend Baxu because it does not compress your armpit and it adjusts to your shoulder level, which means that we have different rounded shoulder that changes our body position. So by re slowly aligning the shoulders back without compressing the armpit, you could actually change the biomechanics of your body and the back is low enough to stabilize your thoracolumbar or right around the bra area where most of the slouching happens when you're sitting. So I do not recommend this or you end up being my patient or somebody's patient for carpal tunnel problem. I do not recommend that and I do not recommend that either. But 
this is my clinical experience and uh, based on the studies that has been done by Baxu, this is what I recommend. Uh, if you have any kind of headaches, neck pain, or posture problem, you could definitely go to our website and buy. I created these kits because I recommend these parts to my patients. So I created these kits for my patients and I am offering it to you for you to have. You can go to thinkhealthy.com and purchase your own posture kit. Each kit has its own identified, uh, has a posture support has massage balls, has a neck traction, and a resistive band. The massage balls are to reduce the swelling and they reduce the knots in your body, so it works with trigger point therapy. The neck traction is for whether you have a headache or numbness and tingling in hands or radiating pain from your neck to your arm. That's the neck pick where we offer you traction, promotion of uh, correcting these curves in your body, and also the resistive band are specific exercises that you could do to strengthen. Now that you relax the muscles, stretch the muscles, tra traction it, let's go ahead and strengthen it so it would put you in a proper or give you more stability with less likelihood of poor posture or damages. I hope this was effective. I hope this was helpful for you to understand why you have knee pain because solutions are, there's a lot of solutions out there that you can choose. Uh, you can consult with your doctors or you can reach us. But uh, think about your posture as you're taking care of your knee. Please be cognizant of the ergonomics of your work. I will see you next Wednesday, same time, same place. And next week, we're going to talk about ankle and foot problems. So please share this video. I will send you a copy and please share this with uh, your friends and family who can benefit and uh, look forward to seeing you next week, same time, same place. Have a wonderful week and stay healthy.